For this part, we're supposed to create two reports. We have created two pages, the revenues and the HR costs pages. The rest of the navigation is present here, just to, from a storytelling perspective, look a little bit more complete. And also, if in the future uh, analysis, we will be using the same sort of data set, uh, we can always result back to what we have currently. What we have right now is a fully functional navigation, at least for these two pages. The rest of them are, again, purely cosmetical. Down here, we have the dim edit and the scenario edit. So what we went for right here is for a revenues analysis where we can uh, look at the business lines and the projects and for the model scenario and the comparative scenario, the forecast and the budget. So before what we did was also actual versus forecast for one of the retail videos where we had a rolling forecast right here. We do have the last closing period where we can actually adjust the highlighting features of the forecast. Uh, however, this is just to basically have the use case applicable here and to be able to actively filter things out if you want to. However, it doesn't actually block any functions or give access to different things as it did previously. Moving on, we have added the quarters um, as well above the months line. That way, uh, if somebody wants to filter down to the quarters, they have the ability to do so, uh, which in turn will also allow them to write back directly into the quarters uh, or directly into totals if they so choose. Down here, what we did was add a KPI card and this KPI card has the variance between the forecast and the budget. Uh, below that, we have the business line with the revenues and the variance. Same thing for the projects right here. Um, obviously, they can be sorted based on our needs and they can also be used to cross highlight what's going on here. Right here, we have the compared versus the modeled by date, basically, and with the variance right above to match what's the difference between the two. Um, moving on, we have added three possible options right here. Uh, let me start with the add project. This allows us to basically edit the dimension and add a project of our choosing. Uh, we can also use it uh, through the dim edit button down here, and this will work exactly the same way. Um, so let me click on this. And so now we have the test project down here, which we have added earlier. Uh, we could obviously remove this as well. It just with a click of a button, we can add, add a new project if we so choose. Another thing we have added onto this project is to make sure that we have alternate views. So currently the view that we have is a little bit globalized for this uh, different quarters and uh, for the value star in there. What we can do instead is go into the show comparative value. And what this will do is it will show us the two um, scenarios that we're trying to compare against each other uh, with the variance in between. It allows us to um, basically write back all these things while providing an alternate view, which uh, we believe from a starting perspective gives a little bit more insight. Uh, another thing to do is we have this little button right here, which allows us to expand the table to full screen, uh, which will allow us to basically view this table in full screen in its full glory, uh, which might make it a little bit easier to navigate the report in the future, especially if we're trying to get ready into the details while writing things back. So it's as the same thing as the previous view, and we have the ability to basically cycle between the two views, uh, no matter whether we're on the expanded or the regular uh, view, which allows us to um, model the scenario in the way that we prefer. So all of the functions are um, we can view from here as well. And that's basically an addition of ours. Moving on to the HR cost page, we have the CTC planning and the allocation. So the way we are planning on this to be working is that we are able to allocate the costs uh, first per employee. And once we have done that and we, we see the general oversight, we are able to allocate those costs to different projects that are found within the business. So for instance, if what we can do is we can add an employee yeah, so if I were to add a new employee, um, we, we have a default value here, but and then we could just call it, for example, John Smith, the new employee. And now if we were to play with the other options, we already have pre-selected internal as we would be working on the internal employees solely. And then we can select the role for that person. We can select the department and we can also select the contract type, which is right here. So add project, this is exactly the same function as we had in the previous uh, version. However, if by any means anybody would like to add the project while they're still within in this format, they are able to do so. Moving down here, this is our quote unquote output uh, part of the report, which provides us with basically insights into the CTC of the model versus the compared, um, the actual percentage value of the totals, and then the variance between them. And right after this, we have the average headcount and the average uh, CTC 
So right here we have the KPI card um, comparable to the one from the revenues. We have the forecasted versus budget values with the variance between. And after that, we have the comparative and modeled uh, little bar chart over here, which allows us to basically view the difference between them as well. So right here, we can basically use all of these slicers and search for an employee's name. If we input only the first name, for example, if we were to input Mark, here we go, Mark Seal, so we have a single person. So the whole idea of this write-back table right here is that we would always boil down to the single person uh, below and then input the data contrary to uh, the revenues version where we were willing to basically look into like quarterly views, etc., and then distribute the costs. Um, considering this is a more specific uh, um, sort of analysis where we have to delve down to the lower levels, um, we do, however, suggest that it's, it's better to actually input the details straight into the lowest level, which is the person, and then uh, make any analysis moving forward from that point. One thing we have done is to make sure that they that the contracts are always expanded so if we are to expand the section the contracts will always be expanded earlier than the rest and the other ones are collapsed just to make the readability a little bit easier so moving on to the allocation part uh, once we're opening this we before we had the input on the top versus the output on the bottom here it's a little bit different we are going to have the input on the top and we're going to have the input down here as well because what this allows us to do is have a slightly filtered view where we solely have the employees and then we also have their cost allocations uh, below. What this enables us to do is that once we open the person, we can allocate their costs to the project and then depending on the amount of months we may have chosen, we can then adjust the proper allocations to distribute it accordingly. One thing we have done is to make sure that we have enabled highlighting. So as soon as we be 100%, it's blue. So this is our expected outcome. Anytime it would be below 100%, uh, it will not get highlighted. And anytime it's over 100%, it will be highlighted red. The reason why it will be highlighted red is because we are expecting that obviously the 100% of the costs will be allocated and not more than the 100% of them. If we, for example, look into support, we can obviously also allocate the cost by num numerous uh, projects. So one, a single employee doesn't need to be assigned to a single project. We can obviously allocate these costs to numerous projects. So for instance, in the department that we named support here, we have um, a number of employees that are currently assigned to different projects. And for example, Albi Holmer right here is assigned to five of them. On the right side right here, we have uh, something similar to the previous page, which is just a bit of a little summary table of everything that's been going on, where we have the CTC, which is of the model, and then the percentage of total uh, and the average headcount for the different projects. Obviously, as we expand on those lists, we can see more, um, but for the moment being, this is the view that we have present. Following the same sort of approach we had in the previous reports, we still have the scenario editing capacities, which are open and available right here at the end of the button. So we have the scenario editing and the scenario data copying, which are both present, um, which enables us to basically uh, add new scenarios other than the forecast and the budget, which are currently already found in the report. Thank you so much for listening.